I know most of y'all probably already know what happened with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and why it ended up the way it did. But I just wanted to share my thoughts about this whole thing. I mean, I'm glad that things came to light and we're finding out what really happened behind the scenes. Because it was so shocking to see Rock City hit rock bottom like that. I'm just gonna say for me and many other people out there feel the same way I do. And this is just my opinion. But this game is straight up butt cheeks. Straight up ass. But this is subjective of course. Again, it's just my opinion. People who like it shouldn't care what I think. Anyway, I'm genuinely happy for the people that like this game, find enjoyment playing it cause I used to also enjoy it till I played through everything the game had to offer. But nah, this game is just straight up ass. Anyway, we're gonna dive straight into some key points in the article Jason Schreier posted here. I'll link it down in the description below if you wanna give it a read yourself. So here it says on May 9th during an earnings call, the WB revealed that they were taking a 200 million loss. Damn, 200 billion dollar loss? Bruh, that's crazy. From the moment this game was revealed, I already had a feeling that this was gonna happen, but not like this, cuz, damn. And here it says, according to interviews, the development of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was a tumultuous affair. Played by countless delays, the game failed for a number of reasons, including a constantly shifting vision, a culture of rigid perfectionism, and a genre pivot that was ill-suited for the studio. This goes to show that the leadership didn't even know what kind of ingredients to cook with in the kitchen. They had way too many ideas floating around. It now makes sense as to why the game kept getting delayed. You even see the developers questioning about the process making, which tells me that they knew this isn't what we wanted, and that this isn't what they wanted to make, but we'll talk more about this later on. I just want to specifically go over this part where it says WB, garnered a lot of traction from 2016 Suicide Squad movie so they decided to build on that momentum. WB Montreal was working on a Suicide Squad game but they were struggling with it apparently and this was when WB Montreal was rumored to be working on two DC titles. I remember that. Since Montreal couldn't pull through they pulled the plug and shifted the game to Rocksteady. This was when Rocksteady's co-founder Jamie Walker and Sefton Hill dropped their game called Stones for Suicide Squad. I just want to say I fucking hate whenever companies try to tie movies to games. And I'm not sure if WB themselves or any other company out there are even aware that coming out of that situation is ever positive. They tried to tie the movie in with the Arkhamverse which was pretty dumb cause now we got an unrecognizable Harley Quinn. She's basically a Margot Robbie Harley Quinn. She's not even acting like how she does in the previous Arkham titles. And the retcon with Deadshot to make him more like Will Smith's version of Deadshot. Like what? We had Deadshot featured in Arkham Origins by the way. You telling me he's been an imposter throughout most of Batman's career? What? It just ruins the coherent timeline we already had established with the Arkhamverse. This wouldn't have been much of a problem if Suicide Squad was in its own universe kinda like how Gotham Knights was. You know what I'm saying? Now here they talk about games as a service titles such as Destiny and League of Legends. WB executives say this category generates lots of cash, blah blah blah. So here basically, WB was chasing trends. How out of touch is this company? Holy sh**. Then here it says Rocksteady had no prior experience obviously. The Batman Arkham games were all single player. They were aware of this but they went for an online multiplayer games as a service anyway. Bro. Wow. Yeah this game was destined to fail. <laughs> Bro, like, just cause games like Destiny and League of Legends are successful don't mean that you can replicate that same success, especially since this isn't Rocksteady's field of expertise. Yeah, <sighs> whatever. Alright. And here it says, over time the leader's vision kept morphing and kept switching the emphasis on melee combat to heavily focus on guns. The change left staff members wondering why characters like Boomerang known for fighting with, you know what, a Boomerang? to suddenly use guns. Then here it talks about the multiple delays the game has had. Now I did play the alpha for this game and I was disappointed that melee combat was basically non-existent. I mean it's kinda there but not the way I envisioned it to be. It was all about the gunplay. Now the gunplay is pretty good and I had my fun with it at the time but it's just 
bizarre to me that a character like Harley Quinn, Boomerang, and King Shark, they don't have any emphasis on melee combat. Deadshot's fine I guess, cause he primarily uses guns so it works. But yeah, I thought the delays would change the way those characters worked. But yeah, this one's crazy. It says, Staff members sometimes waited for weeks or months for Sefton Hill. The studio's perfectionist co-founder and director of the game to review their work which slowed down development. He scrapped big chunks of the script and struggled to convey his ideas. Constant delays hurt the team's morale because they were failing to make progress. Yeah, well damn. We can clearly see why there was so many delays. Sefton Hill was very inconsistent with reviewing their game and he just had way too many ideas but he scrapped a bunch of them too. And the article mentions he had plans to make the Suicide Squad characters to be able to navigate the map and pimp out motorcycles. The staff was questioning this idea because the characters already had a traversal mechanic built for them. So yeah, they ended up scrapping the whole idea. We kind of did get a vehicle that we can use to fly around and shoot with but only for like a limited time and it would only show up during certain missions in the game. Now here's the reason why I think this game is straight up buns and why it turned out the way it did. It makes sense as to why the game felt very repetitive. The article mentions Rocksteady struggled to find ways to make activities feel less tedious and repetitive because we know they're only accustomed to telling stories that are only experienced once. Since they were following how a boss fight in live service games should be, the story took a big hit in terms of quality as we can see from the season 1 Joker drop. Now this is where Rocksteady's lack of experience in this field comes from. The content in the game is very lackluster. You're basically doing the same missions over and over again. Especially when you make it to the end game. There's just no variety and what is even the point at the end besides raising your mastery levels. You don't even get anything from climbing up the leaderboards either besides getting some kind of medal at the end of this season. Then here it mentions the management promises the team that Suicide Squad would eventually coalesce at the last minute like the Arkham games. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Several of the employees adopted the term toxic positivity to describe the culture of their company. Yikes. Then it goes on to mention leadership wasn't worried about this game even though the games listed on here were blah blah blah. Delivering bad, abysmal results. What? What you mean, bruh? What you mean y'all weren't worried, bruh? And they go and say Suicide Squad is expected to become a billion dollar franchise, bro. Like, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't know about that one. There's a saying if you put your thoughts into it and if you really believe it, it becomes reality. In WB's case, this is straight up delusional as f If anything, seeing games like Marvel's Avengers, Redfall, and Anthem should have swayed them from not making a live service game. Like, not all games need to be live service, bro. Like, come on now. Now this part, oof. This one was iffy. This one was iffy as hell. Okay, so the article mentions the co-founder Sefton Hill and Jamie Walker were leaving Rock City because it's adventure time, I guess. I don't know. Adventure time! The change of leadership shocked the staff. They said very little to nothing why they left. Sefton and Jamie started their own studio called 100 Star Games. And they told potential recruits from Rocksteady that they'll have opportunities to make games without mandates and pressure from WB. Alright, so this part bothers me. I could have sworn I saw Sefton Hill saying that Suicide Squad was in a good state for him to be able to move on to something new. I think it was in an interview or something. But yeah, he said it was in a good state for him to be able to move on, which wasn't the case at all since the game still has issues to this day. I mean, he left before the game could even release. And to me, it seems like he just, he left Rocksteady to avoid the flack from people. Like, doesn't that just seem sketch? He should have just took the hit with the team. This whole thing makes him look like an ass. Like, damn, good. Their ship was sinking and he was like, nope, y'all can deal with it. Yeah, whatever his reasons are for leaving, that's just a bad look for him. But that's what this article is painting him to be based off of what we're reading here. Seems like he might just be the villain, man. God damn. 
I'm just gonna say without him though, we wouldn't have gotten four amazing Batman games, so yeah. Maybe with Septon Hill gone, it might be better for Rock City, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. It mentions they'll be returning to their roots, so they're gonna be making single player games from now on, which I like to hear. So all hope is not lost for Rocksteady, I mean, maybe we'll get to see another Batman game or another DC superhero game or whatever, it might not even be DC related, we shall see. As long as it's not a live service game, I'ma check it out. They'll make a comeback from Suicide Squad, I still have faith in them. But yeah, Suicide Squad in my opinion, sucked, but there was a few things that was good, such as the graphics. The smooth gunplay, the character design, especially Batman's suit, and the smooth traversal movement, and also Metropolis. I, I actually really like the design of Metropolis. It was pretty dope to see Metropolis come to life. But yeah, now we know where it all went wrong, and I hope the leadership of WB and Rocksteady learn from this. But yeah, that's about it. Those were just some of my thoughts. I'm curious to see what people think about this whole thing. But yeah, that's about it for me. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. Peace.